What's cracking, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome back to the channel. New video. So I had a I had a whole video in mind today, thumbnail ready from last night. Um, what I wanted to talk about with you guys, and um, I was getting ready. You know, I've been running around all day. I'm still getting over the sickness, whatever it is. So bear with me. Um, and uh, you know, I was listening to different podcasts that I like as I was preparing, you know, running my errands today. And, and I just heard uh, Valuetainment. And so um, I want to make sure there's so many things going on in the world. People have been asking me and Gunner and other people about uh, our currency, our economy, this BRICS thing. And it's unfortunate when, when people have to ask ex-cons about what's going on in the world because they cannot get it from their own media. We can't, they can't get it from our government and our media. Very important things are being kept away from the mainstream. And um, unfortunately, people have to turn to ex-cons to find out because we are actually paying attention. Um, we're worried, we're concerned, and we're sharing our concern. Now, you guys have been asking me on the live about the whole Bud Light thing, right? And and I want to make it clear. I've made it clear multiple times on my lives. I'll make it clear again here. In no way am I a homophobe. I think whatever people choose to do behind closed doors is their business. Whoever people choose to love is their business. Um, I think it's unfortunate that um, people are choosing to politicize this issue. It's, it's, it's hotter than the race issue. And it's the reason why is because they're emotional. You know, there's a particular party that likes to um, inflame people's emotions because once their emotions take over their intellect, they're easier to um, direct. It, they're easier to program if they can get you to use your emotion over your intellect. So. You know, people have been asking about this whole Bud Light thing. I don't care. I, 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 I've I stayed out of it. I'm like, whatever, man. You know, it, it cracks me up how, you know, when I when I did my video the other day on my other channel and people were saying, obviously, oh, I think it might have been this channel. No, it was the other channel. And I was talking about Adam 22's um, business decisions lately and people, oh, dubs, he doesn't know. He would never know how to run a business. I bet you I would have never made the decision that Bud Light did. So I want to I want to play a snippet and hopefully you know I'm not going to show it you're just going to hear it and I want you to just listen to this real quick. Oh hold on. Hit the wrong button, my bad. Play, damn it. Watch this here. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light Rainbow's and it was this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So go. I had this super clear mandate. It's like mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate super clear. <laughs> this incredibly iconic the, brand. And so there we go. I'm done with that. You guys can go check it out. It's it's basically has the same title as this one. It's called Bud Light Crashes 30% After Endorsement of Dylan Mulvaney on Valuetainment. came out a few hours ago. So this is me. And my small podcast or my small channel engaging with you guys because you guys have been asking. So as you heard this woman, this head of marketing, this brand new head of marketing for Bud Light, she was given the green light. Bud Light is dying. I'm sure it was making a grip of money still, but it was dying according to their standards, right? And so do whatever you need to do to bring in new drinkers. And this person, I guess, had the, the, the mindset, excuse me, I'm still, had the idea, the mindset of, let me go after a community that is emotional. And you'll hear it in the in the Value Tainment podcast because it was the same thing, a same exact conversation I had with somebody earlier today, and they said it on Value Tainment. How many gay guys 
do you see like when you envision gay guys and do you envision them like really with a with a beer can in their hand? Like I f- I see them with like a mixed drink and uh, you know getting bougie with it. But like, but like you thought that was a good idea. Okay, well, so I encourage you guys to go and watch the the Valuetainment episode, um, and they give out the actual numbers. Um, breweries and bars in certain areas, even in a gay community, that have basically said, we're not going to be drinking Bud Light. Because, see, Bud Light, it was so, they were so blatant in their pandering. And if you look at the numbers, I guess they're trying to make it like the transgender beer or something. I don't know what they're trying to do. But if you look at the vast majority of People who identify as transgender, I don't think the vast majority of them, I don't even think they're old enough to drink. So um, somebody go ahead and double check that and let me know in the comments. And if that's true, if that's the case, then these people were completely, this woman was completely at asleep at the wheel and just saw an opportunity to try to uh, create a wave. Me personally, I hate Bud Light. I think Budweiser itself tastes like crap. So I didn't I didn't like Budweiser as it is. Um, the last time I have drank Budweiser, it was Bud Light Platinum. And that's just because you get a good buzz. But even those tasted weird. You guys that have been on my channel know when we were drinking, doing the lives, having a good time. You've never seen me drink a Budweiser other than a Platinum. And it's been a while since I did that. Um, so I think Budweiser... Instead of trying to pander to specific communities and, and, and get people emotional about a brand and trying to, you know, make them be your huckleberry, as they say, uh, instead of doing that, why don't you just work on your recipe? Make better tasting beer. Um, and understand that that we are in a horrible economy right now. And I will be doing the video um a video regarding the economy and other things that are going on. It, are we in the end of days? A lot of people are asking. And I'll give my opinion on that. You see that trash can jumping? That trash can is for your idea, uh, marketing lady. <laughs> the trash can was like, I'm right here in case you want to throw her idea in there. That's where your idea should have went. I'm sure you spent a lot. No, you probably didn't. Um, you probably racked up a lot of student loan debt and then Biden bailed you out on that. But there was a lot of years in, in college and business school and that's the idea you come up with. Instead of saying, hey, you know, let me taste this beer and compare the taste to other beers and say, huh, maybe we tinker with the taste a little bit or something. I don't know. Maybe we put more into marketing. Maybe we we sponsor a sports team or a, or a NASCAR team or something. But instead, you thought you could just stick something on a can and put somebody out there, your puppet, right? Sing and dance for us. We'll pay you a few million and hopefully we'll make a billion off you. It didn't work. Instead, you're losing a lot of money for very poor decision making. Uh And I and I, I can just hear the people in the comments that I don't know how to run a business. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't have did that. I guarantee you. Let me get in that. I'm gonna be very cautious in what I do so that I bring the numbers up. I'm gonna be very, very <laughs> focused on bringing the numbers up. You know, when you get tapped, when you get tapped by your boss to show them what you know how to do, you show them what that you know and that you should have been tapped. I'm saying you don't you don't you don't destroy a brand that's already dying anyways man that's that's my video for the day um i'm sorry i i I really i was gonna do a different video but this thing when i heard it man and you know there's so much talk about it and how just off the wall that was you know why are i was about to leave but here i go why are we and why have we been in a place in this country where 
all of a sudden we give a damn about what a certain group of people want to do behind closed doors. What happens behind closed doors, as long as it is between two consenting adults, is nobody's business but theirs. Can we get back to that point in this country? I don't want to know what other people are doing. I think that, you know, people being able to be in love, whatever, whatever you love, man, as long as it's not no no weird stuff man as long as you love another adult and that adult loves you back and you find happiness with each other that's what should count i shouldn't have to give anyone's preferential treatment because i don't get any and i don't expect any i just want to be happy and everybody else should too so anyways there, there again there goes my video man everybody please be safe be smart and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.